And I recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Khanna, for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Dr. Call, one of the experts uh, who I was talking to told me that Russia has six times the artillery as uh, Ukraine. Is that true? Not anymore. Uh, I think the reality is that we don't know precisely how much artillery Russia has left, but we do know that they have expended an extraordinary amount of it and that they are running low, which is why they're turning to the likes of uh, North Korea and others uh, in desperate search of more artillery. Where would you put the ratio at now? It's hard to say. I, we could talk more about this precisely in the classified uh, setting, and a lot of it also depends on the assumptions you make about um, the viability of ammunition that Russia has had in storage for 40 or 50 years, going back to the Soviet days, so it's a little bit of an art rather than a science. Um, I do think the Russians continue to have artillery, but they are, they are suffering tremendous shortages at the front um, of artillery, which is why they're turning to countries like North Korea. And as uh, someone who had deeply admires the president's policy and uh, Tony Blinken's role, your role, and has voted for all the age packages, I guess my, my question is, what is your confidence level at this point that Ukraine will be able to hold uh, all the territory it currently holds in a war of attrition? I think that, as Lieutenant General Sims uh, has testified, the front line right now is kind of a, gr is a grinding slog, uh, and you're likely to see incremental gains on both sides. So, for example, uh, the Russians have made some in incremental gains around Bakhmut, uh, in recent weeks and months, but at the cost of thousands and thousands of casualties in these human wave attacks from the Wagner prisoners and, and others. Um, so you may see uh, uh, small portions of territory change hands uh, in the coming weeks and months. I do not think that there's anything I see that suggests the Russians can sweep across Ukraine and make significant territorial gains anytime uh, 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 in the next year or, or so, and we are making sure the Ukrainians have the capabilities to stop them from doing that, and while at the same time giving them the capabilities to go on the offensive themselves to claw back more territory. And I assume, Dr. Kahl, your assumption is contingent on the House continuing to support Ukraine with aid, or are you saying already with what we've given? No, I mean, well, so first of all, the, 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 the House, the Senate, uh, the American people have been extraordinarily generous. Uh, we've uh, spent about $31.7 billion dollars uh, in security assistance over the last year. We have about $12 billion remaining uh, from the money uh, that uh, you all provided uh, at the end of last year for the remainder of this fiscal year. Um, it is true that Ukraine continues to depend on assistance from the United States and our allies and partners, and that will be true for some period of time. So yes, if the world walked away from Ukraine, then the balance would tip in Russia's favor, but there is no reason to believe- And how many more operate. rounds of aid do you expect? And I say this as someone who supported him and wants to continue to support him, but just in terms of the American public, how many more times do you think Congress needs to provide aid? You know, it's, it's, it's difficult, and not, it's difficult because we don't know the course and trajectory of the conflict. Uh, the conflict could end six months from now, it could end two years from now or three years from now. I think the president has said that uh, the United States will continue to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. I think we've had a good conversation today about why that's in the vital national interest of the United States. So I would hope that Congress would continue uh, to be supportive. Um, but we should only come and ask for what Ukraine really needs. And as this conversation has said, what we can account for and demonstrate to the American people is actually benefiting our interests. And what do you think at the end is the end game? I mean, obviously we talk about a just peace. What does that look like to you? And how does how do we get there? Well, of course, Ukraine has, has detailed its principles for a just peace. We just had more than 140 countries in the UN General Assembly essentially uh, ratify their approach. Um, I think a just peace would involve Russia withdrawing from the territory that they have illegally occupied from uh, Ukraine. But ultimately, the Ukrainians are going to be the ones that determine uh, what peace settlement is, uh, is acceptable or not. Our position has been to make sure that at whatever point they enter into those conversations, uh, they do so from a position of strength. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentleman here. Now, recognize the gentleman from Florida.